Loving Father, we just thank you <clears throat> that you have made us, dear Lord, to be your witnesses, to be your feet and your hands here on earth. And dear Lord, as we look at the ways that we can be a blessing to others today, I pray that you will bless us and help each one of us to be a blessing to someone today and every day of the week that is coming up, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So if we want to be a blessing, what can we do? You may not be able to go overseas and be a missionary to another country, but you can be a blessing to someone <clears throat> right where you are. What about your neighbours? All right, somebody new might move into the neighbourhood. You could go and give them some, something to eat and say, welcome to our neighbourhood and introduce yourself that way. You might invite the neighbours over for a meal, get to know them more personally, know more about them, be able to become their friend. And by becoming their friend, you can eventually be able to share God's love with them. It might be their birthday. You can send a birthday card. You can send a birthday card to whoever you like and be a blessing to someone. There's nothing like getting something in the mail Email's good too, but there's nothing like going to that letterbox and opening the letterbox and finding something there, I think, anyway. You might be able to help someone with their gardening. They might have had an accident or they just might be getting older and just need a little help. You can be a blessing by being their helper in the garden. They might be going away and you can offer to help look after their place, water the garden feed the dog, whatever needs to be done, and be a blessing to them. What about food? Some people, <clears throat> some people these days have no idea how to prepare a good and healthy meal. So that's something that you might, in, in, in conversation with someone, you might find that they want to know a little bit more and you're able to help them be a blessing to them and to their family. Someone might be sick in hospital, <coughs> excuse me, you might be able to go and visit. There's nothing like a visit when you, you are in hospital and you feel like you've been forgotten. If you can't go, you might be able to send some flowers to say, get well. Or you might be able to send a card that says, I'm thinking of you and we want you to get well soon. What else could we do? You could get on the phone. If you've looked around church today and noticed that some people are missing, you might be able to get on the phone sometime this week or on the email <clears throat> and ring them or text them and say, we missed you today, I hope you're all OK. Is there anything that I can do? This way we can be a blessing to someone else. You might have heard of somebody who is running low on finances running low on food supplies. You might be able to put a kit together of food and take it to them and remind them that they are thought about, they are loved and cared for. Sometimes we older ones have trouble with the computers. I know I've got to get Vince to tell me what to do and how to do it and, honey, can you help me do this? So you might know someone, you might be a wizard, a computer, and you might know someone who isn't and needs a little hand. There's another way that you can be a blessing. Walking the dog. Someone might need the dog walked because they've broken their leg or whatever else it might be. And also there are shelters here on the coast, animal shelters, that need people to walk their animals and give them some exercise and not only are you helping the dog, but you're helping yourself as well if you do that. <coughs> Somebody might have fallen, might have a sore leg or something else, and you're able to help. Sometimes people ask questions about what life is all about, why you believe what you believe. And we know that we are to be ready to give an answer at any time that someone asks us, don't we? another way that we can be a blessing to someone. And one thing I find very um, special is being able to pray with someone and being a blessing that way. Sometimes you might be a little bit shy to say to someone, would you like me to pray for you? I'm not talking about people in our church community, but I'm talking about 
friends that you come across or people that you associate with or whatever and they have something that happens and I ask them if you, you could pray for them and you'd be amazed at how that blesses you and blesses them. And often people will say, no one's ever asked me that before or never, no one's ever prayed for me before. So you can be a blessing in that way as well. You might help at the soup kitchen. I know a lot of you have been involved and still are involved with the local um, soup kitchen here on the central coast. That's tremendous. Again, being a blessing to those who are less fortunate. You might be involved in the food pantry, helping people again to be able to get food at a lower cost, to be able to carry on in their lives. Each thing that you do like this is a blessing to someone else. Clean Up Australia. All right, that's a time that we can get involved in community projects and make a difference. And even just in our own local neighbourhood, you might look around and say, wow, somebody's been untidy here and thrown rubbish and whatever. Don't be afraid to put your gloves on and get a bag and pick it up and put it somewhere else and be a blessing to your neighbourhood. All right, there might be a community project where things are happening and that you can get involved with as well, with other people from the community. We know Australia has lots of things that happen, fires, droughts, floods, all disasters, storms. What can we do about them? Sometimes we might be able to volunteer to be able to go and help clean up. Other times not. But we might also be able to give some money to be able to help. And often we do that through ADRA and other, um, other ways. To be able to help those who have been affected. And you can be a blessing in their lives too. People overseas have disasters happen as well. We can't go and do anything to help. But we can give so that we can make a difference. The next little section I'd like to talk about is about volunteering. And I'm talking, I guess, some, something that's passionate for me, and that is volunteering at um, retirement villages. A lot of you here, and some who've left our church and moved other places, over the years have been involved at Orem with delivering the church service on a Sunday. And that has been a great blessing to the residents that are there. Since COVID, though, um, things changed and we can no longer organise programs like we could before. It's all done through the home itself. And um, after COVID, our group was not able to go back again, except there were only allowed to be four people who could go in and do services. And that was um, a couple, three, three people from the Orem... Uh, the Impact Church next door to Orem, and myself from our church. And we've been doing, um, to start with, when we finally got the go-ahead to do it, we were doing three services every Sunday in three different sections, um, which was fairly hectic. Now we're doing two because we found we weren't having enough time to be able to talk to the, the people there. But the oldies love hearing about God, singing praises, and just meeting together. If you get a chance to volunteer at a senior citizen, senior aged care facility any time, it's not always straightforward. There's some red tape that has to be gone through to be able to do it, but you get a real blessing from doing it. All right, you might be like Debbie and Ivan, play the guitar and sing. All right, they've been doing this for years now at um, Tarragal Glen, up at um, Avondale one of the homes up there, Alton, um, Alton Lodge, all right? And that is very much appreciated. And now they've come on board and they're helping at Orem and doing some singing there as well. Now, I know you'll laugh at this next one. That's not my hands, but that's me playing the piano. All right, last year, um, the lady in charge of organising the activities for the oldies at Orem, asked me if I'd play the piano for them. And I said, what? Me play the piano? It's OK, I play it on, Saturday, on Sundays for the church services and everyone sings along, but playing by myself, whoa. 
I said, oh, I don't know about that. But anyway, finally I, I said yes. And a year ago I started um, twice a month playing the piano for, for an hour, three quarters of an hour, whatever it went for. I can't play here at church because I'm not good enough, but the oldies love me playing the, the old songs that they enjoy and stuff. Um, so, and it gives me a real buzz too. Um, so, you, you know, you might think, hey, I'm not talented or whatever, but you'd be surprised what they do enjoy. I'm not talented, but I make a joyful noise. <laughs> and I feel privileged to be able to do that. And Debbie and Ivan have just started helping me as well. There's the faces. That's what you see on their faces at the end. Or while they're listening, they enjoy singing and listening and, in, and um, joining in very much. Because there's a lot of... Some of the, the folk there, um, things are very mundane for them. Yes, they have activities for them to attend to. Some don't even have families that come to visit. And they can be very lonely. I'm thinking of one particular gentleman. He's actually a bit younger than what I am and I call him my little brother. He's had a leg amputated and he's had a lot of infections and a lot of pain from it since. And um, I've kept cheering him along um, over the time that this has been happening for him. But when we were there on Thursday, I'm going to cry in a minute, I just saw that the light from his eyes has gone. He's had enough. He's, um, he doesn't have family nearby or anything like that. And a lot of people don't go to visit him. And I just saw he said, I've had enough. And it just saddens me that people get to that point. And anyway, we keep going and visiting and cheering him along. Some people don't have anyone to visit. You can go along as a volunteer and play some games with them, Scrabble or someone playing drafts or noughts and crosses or any of those sorts of things. Some people have trouble seeing. We've, in fact, we've got one gentleman um, who, who is... Uh, he can't speak, but he can hear, and he can't do anything with his hands. He's in one of those tub beds, and that's his life, being in a tub bed. But people come along and read to him. And he loves that when somebody reads the Bible to him or just a story. It just brings him so much joy. And his favourite song that we sing on a Sunday is Jesus Loves Me. And we make sure that each time that we, um, Arthur and I, that's the partner that I work with, we make sure that we sing Jesus Loves Me, especially for him, because it brings him so much joy. You might go, go and visit Bring some flowers to someone. There's just so many things that you can do with people in the old people's home, even just to go to chat to them. Like this guy that I was telling you about that's lost his leg and he's in the wheelchair all the time. He just feels that there's no one, like he's got all his faculties, but a lot of the people in his section don't have theirs. They're not as lucid. And so he feels like he's just needs somebody normal to talk to and um, that doesn't happen very often because he doesn't have family or friends. So they're just some of the things that we can do to be able to be a blessing to others. All right, you might go to the old people's home or even a neighbour or something who's in a wheelchair and can't get around. Take them for a walk somewhere different. You might even put them in your, their, your car and take them somewhere so that they can have something different. So friends, I just want to leave that with you this morning, the thought from that song, Make Me a Blessing. And I'd like you, to, like you to make that your mantra too. Lord, make me a blessing to someone today.